Hi everyone, this is Ash and this is Indie Insider. My guest today is Callum Kerr. Hi Callum, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Just not enjoying this cold weather we're having. Oh my God, I've heard it's snowing in the UK. Oh, well, some parts, it hasn't snowed here. I'm in a little seaside town in Kent. Oh, um, not bad for some. The rest oh, of the nation's freezing. You're doing all right down there. What is it, 25 degrees? <laughs> oh, gosh. N- <laughs> I'd say it's at six degrees at the moment. <laughs> okay, okay. That's not, you know, it's not too bad. I think we're about the same here in Nashville. Okay, and I bet it snows in Nashville too. Yeah, it snowed, it snowed last year, so we'll see what happens. But uh, it's not been cold enough yet so it's yeah we're doing all right so far oh fantastic and i love your accent now we we briefly spoke about accents just now you've got the half american half scottish accent yeah yeah not not on purpose i uh i guess <laughs> <laughs> i came to the states first about 12 years ago and uh i guess you just start picking up yes things that, are, that other people say so um yeah i didn't ever wake up one morning and think i'm going to start speaking a little bit more american but <laughs> it must just happen over time and it's a it's a bit shameful i'll go home and my friends will make fun of me but weirdly enough if i'm home for four or five days the american kind of disappears pretty quick really when you back to your broad scottish accent oh yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah wow. almost immediately so it's, i mean uh, it's, it's in there somewhere it's easy yeah, it's in there somewhere I had a quick look at your bio, mm-hmm. and I'm actually quite fascinated that you were in um, Holly Oaks and uh, Flowers in the Attic. Yeah, yeah, I was in Holly Oaks for uh, about a year, which I think I think that's just come off Channel Four in the UK. Um, but that was one of the longest running soap operas in the UK. Yes, um, and that was somewhat of a of a bit of a break for me in acting wise. Um, you know, I'd been in some stuff before, but because that's on national TV every single night, it kind of uh, it kind of boosted my CV, and uh, I loved it. I, I had a great time. I lived in Liverpool for a year and a half, and it was uh, I made great friends. Liverpool's such a great place to live, right? And, uh, yeah, I had a cracking time. And then Flowers in the Attic was just right after that. I came out of Hollyoaks. And uh, it was the middle of COVID. We filmed that in Romania, like wow. in the midst of COVID. And again, I've been so lucky with with this work taking me to these crazy places. And uh, I would I would recommend Romania to anyone. It's such a beautiful place and great people. Um, some of the I not I didn't expect the people to be quite as friendly. I thought it would be quite stoic, and you know they were uh, they were in the USSR for so many years and I think they got their independence in like 1990 or something like that right. and I'm probably wrong on the date but I, qu- I expected them to be very like Soviet and quite stoic but they were like so friendly and cheery and I had such a great time in that's Romania. interesting to know what what actually made you go into acting then were you always uh interested in acting I I, th- I don't I can't remember what it was but I, at one point I think I was in my teens I kind of just decided like that's what I wanted to do um, and then it took me till I was about 21 to pluck up the courage and actually start trying because I, I was just a bit embarrassed for for some reason in my where I'm from. It's you know, you don't if, if you're a guy, you, you go into a trade and if you're a girl, you know, you're a nurse or a teacher. And it's like it's kind of a, a, a one way street where I'm from. Right. Uh, so I, I don't know. It just seemed kind of strange to say, oh, I'm going to be a performer, you know. <laughs> 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 uh, not many people say that and you know there no one in my town had ever done anything like that before we had a couple you know professional football players here and there you know guys that were lucky enough to make money playing football but that was yes. about the extent of like you know being on the television that you get if you're from Musselburgh where I'm from but uh yeah I just one day kind of had a uh, come to Jesus moment and uh, <laughs> moved to London and and I was yeah I never looked back it's been great and what made you decide to go from acting to music, being a musician? So music is something that I've done since I was young. So I started playing the guitar when I was 10 in, in primary school. Right. And um, I've always played covers of other people's music, whether it was in my bedroom when I was younger or, you know, playing them in bars and stuff like that. And 
uh, I I did a, a TV show called Monarch, which was a TV show in the US on um, Fox, which is like their national. It's kind of like ITV or something in the UK. It's a okay. nationwide uh, TV channel, and I played a country singer uh, from Texas, and I'd been living in Texas, and country music is my favorite kind of music. And I just kind of got the the itch, you know. I, I was pretending to be this country singer from Texas <laughs> on screen, and I was I was like, this would actually be quite a good life. Yes. So I just, yeah. I just that that was kind of, I'd say that was more of a dream than acting was was the was to you know play the guitar and sing, and I just never really pursued it. Again, it took me until I was about like twenty eight to actually pursue it. So, you know, if I could have right. started earlier. If I could change one thing, I would have started earlier. But you know what? It's one of those things, you know, you, you live and you learn and you adapt. And that, that's, that's true. Kind of, I'm so glad that the journey has taken me to into music. Did you learn to play the guitar when you were doing the playing this role? Uh, so I already knew the guitar. Okay. Um, so it was it was actually learning to I never really sat like I'd never been in a recording studio or, or I hadn't done much live music. So it was it was more so the singing that I had to kind of practice more. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the guitar. I've, I've been playing that since I was about 10 years old and I'm not, you know, I'm not the world's best guitarist, but I can play it well enough to sing along to. Yes. So, um, that was I didn't have to adapt too much there. But yeah, it was the, the singing that was uh, it was almost like the new skill. And you quite enjoy that now. Where you're doing your own thing. You're not sort of reading lines, yeah, and love acting, it. all that. This is what you prefer doing. You know, I I, I still have a, a a thirst for for acting and film and stuff like that. But it, it does give you a little bit more control because you know, I, if I wake up in the morning, I can't just say, right, I'm going to go be in a film today. You know, but I can't <laughs> say, <laughs> which right. I wish. I know we all wish we could, but yes. The opposite side of that is I can wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to write a song today. Or, you know, like I play live music here in Nashville, sometimes five, six times a week. Um, so, you know, I, it, it it does give me a little bit more control over my creativity. Um, but, you know, saying that, I, I still love acting. And um, we've just come out of the SAG strike that, you know, between the writer's strike and the yes. actor's strike is, it was about seven months long or something like that. And, um, so I'm looking forward to, to some more acting opportunities coming up. Oh, that's good. Now, if it had to interfere with your music, do you choose between the two? You know, I I don't think, I think I'm lucky enough where I don't think they would. It would just be, and maybe the scheduling, you know, if, if right. something scheduled. But I think, you know, w- what I've done in over the last couple of years, I just filmed a, a TV show um, in june and may and june which i guess i, I can't talk about yet which is annoying sure. <laughs> you, tv shows are always so precious i'm like relax oh no just chill but, you know you go online and you know someone breaks the news or something and they're like we wanted to break so what i'm like whatever but um oh. so I did a, a tv show there in uh in may and june right before the strike and uh the I, you know i'm able to just pause the music while I go and do an acting job and then the great thing is as soon as the act you know the last day of the of filming I can jump right back into music the very next day so um, oh, quite lucky in the way that you know it keeps me busy but also you know they kind of lend each other some time oh but that's good you know at least it doesn't interfere the music doesn't interfere with your acting and vice versa which is good totally, totally. yeah do you remember your first music teacher um yeah I, so i was i wasn't a very good <laughs> kid in school so i actually got kicked out of music class <laughs> oh no what did you do well they were making us play the recorder which first of all is the most lame instrument of all time you know? <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine yes you know but if if anything you know i was i was quite talented music wise in terms of like i could pick up most instruments and play them right away but in my stupid teenage boy head the recorder was a waste of time. So, um, you know, we would misbehave in class. And, and there was one term, I think, in particular, where I got kicked out of music for the whole term. So for like oh, three months, no. I, was, I wasn't allowed in the music corridor, um, which is so funny that I'm now doing music kind of full time. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. But, you know, I had, uh, I had a great guitar teacher in primary school. Um, but again, he played, he was teaching us classical guitar. 
And I just oh, wanted dear. to play like Green Day and Fall Out Boy and like all these rock bands that I used to listen to. Yes, you preferred to play that sort of guitar, yeah. not, not instrumental, not, not instrumental, I meant classical. Totally. So I was a bit of a stubborn git in school. <laughs> <laughs> so I, if anything, I'd probably owe a few teachers an apology, but uh yeah, I think um, you know, it was all it was all worth it in the end. It's all worth it. I mean, I'm sure if they see you now, they'll shake your head and say, You should have listened in class, but yeah. <laughs> the way you are today, we are proud of you. Well, I hope so. I hope so. If they're uh, if they're out there and they're listening, then I'd love to I'd love to shake a few hands and <laughs> And not a few heads, yes. <laughs> yeah, and make some amendments. <laughs> and um Callum, please tell us how you would describe your music. Um, I would describe my music as uh, modern or contemporary country um, with either a kind of pop or a rock twist, depending nice. on the song. Um, yeah, I think that's in, in its most basic form. Um, and I think I would I would describe it as uh, it's not trying to fit into any kind of specific sound. I'm kind of just, you know, I'm experimenting with music and I'm I'm trying to make things that I think sound good. And uh, and I, you know, obviously, I hope that other people do too. But I'm not trying to, you know, it's not a specific sound where I'm saying I want to sound like this guy or I sure. want to sound like it's got, it's got to be in the charts. Um, and uh, I, I I'm keeping it completely independent. So I had a couple of options for distribution deals and record deals, and I kind of just turned them all down in order to own my own music. So I don't think it's ever going to be. On the kind of mainstream radio, you kind of need to be with a record label for that. But yeah. I'm kind of happy with that. I own everything that I put out 100%. And uh, yeah, it's I it's, agree. It's I mean, there's a good side to being with a record label, but then there's also a bad side. But as you said just now, it won't be sort of your music. It'll be the music they want you to play. Mm-hmm. As mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned, I mean, I could be wrong, but... You know, then you're tied to them. Totally, yeah. They can they can kind of dictate how often you can release music and which yeah. songs that you release. And you know, I'm quite fortunate. And the internet is such an amazing place that you know, without any of that stuff, just in the last few months, we've we've I've had like half a million streams on some songs wow. that I wrote and put them out. And four of the songs only came out a couple of months ago. And you know, so it's. It's quite incredible. I'm kind of learning how to use social media to to push the songs, and you know, so I've ne- I've never put any money behind a PR team or a marketing team, and and you know, we're starting to build the monthly listeners, and so it's good. It's just uh, it's kind of I I don't feel like you fully need a record label. I think they're definitely helpful in some ways, um, but if you can do it without, then it's you know, I think it's a lot more beneficial. Sure, no, I agree. I mean, I know it's you get sort of inspiration. And you pat yourself on the back when you can see all your streams. You see fans interacting with you, you mm-hmm. interacting with your fans. You know, it, it's it's a special feeling. Totally, totally. Yeah, and, the, you know, because I use social media to kind of try and push the music so much, a lot of people reach out via Instagram. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard because I don't have time to to go through everything every day and get back to every single person, but... Right. It is amazing some of the some of the things that people will you know I'll get I'll get back to people when I can. Um, of course, people are just so kind about you know oh, you know I found you on TikTok and I've been listening to your music ever since or you know my daughter loves your music or my mom or you know it's just getting those little messages. You just it totally people don't you know I I, I think sometimes people think oh this guy's been on TV or whatever so it's you know. It, He's used to it, or so, I, I don't know, but sure. it, it really does make a, it makes my day seeing those kind of comments and stuff like that. You know, um, makes so. your heart go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a, little, a little softy on the inside, so oh, it, it, it totally uh, fills me with joy. What message would you like to give to your fans, or what is one message you'd like to give to your fans? Um. Gosh, I, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I'd say it's just cliche, but just thanks for listening. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm just experimenting. So, you know, if there's, a, if there's a song that you like, keep listening. If there's a song you don't like, that's cool. You of know? course. You don't have to like every single song. But uh, I appreciate every single time you, you click play on uh, 
on whatever streaming service you listen to because it, uh, it really helps me out. And it, yeah, feels like I a joy when, when you see those streams going up. It, you see that people are enjoying something that you've made from from nothing, you know, from just scratch, an idea, yes. a line or a, a guitar riff, and then you build a whole song and people actually listen to it. It's quite amazing. It's a great feeling. Another question for you. How do you handle frequent travels and being away from home for long periods of time? Um, so I've I've always liked traveling. Um, I love seeing new parts of the world. Like, for example, we were talking about um, your heritage. Um, and I yes. went to Cape Town a couple of years ago. Um, and I'd, I would never have been to Cape Town or S- South Africa if it hadn't oh. been for, for acting work. So I'd... You know, I think, first of all, I'm really, really blessed to be able to go and do that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, the being away from home is is frustrating. For example, you know, I'm in a, a relationship and, um, you know, being away for I was away for two, just about two months this summer. And it's hard, um, you know, especially if 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 you've got obligations back home. Sure. Uh, stuff like that. So uh, it's all worth it in the end, you would say. It's all worth it. I kind of just don't think about it too much during the time. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. just kind of I just kind of get on with it to be honest. You know, I think if if you're away for 2 months and you're thinking about how thinking about home every day, you're just going to torture yourself. So oh, I think no. I just kind of say, you know what? This is this is what I do for work and I've not got a choice. So we just exactly. get on. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Like I said, I love traveling, so I just make the most of it. You know, I was in Prague this summer and you know, I've, Wow. Uh, you know, I've been to Germany and Spain and um, South Africa and uh, God, just all, I, you know, there's places that I'm forgetting about that I've been to film, but oh, fantastic. been all over the world um, with this job. So I have no complaints. You know, I'd, I'd hate to be heard complaining that I get to travel all over the world to make TV, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, like I said, it's, it can be hard at times being away from loved ones, but it's just part of the job and, and you know, you just make the most of it. And I agree. Uh, I agree. Yeah, you really have the have the loved ones come out and visit you when you're out there. That's even better. That's really, yeah. especially if you've got children. Yeah, yeah. I've got a I've got a baby on the way. First. Oh, thing. cute. Yeah, we're uh, we're excited for that. So it's gonna make it's gonna make traveling a whole new experience. But... Oh dear, having another baby. You know the traveling, but I'm sure you know you old hands at it. You know you you, you experienced. In the way that with a baby traveling or a little toddler, you know, you get well, used I, so to it. I, I don't, I don't have a kid yet. Uh, my oh, you don't have? Okay. No, my sister has a baby, so I've kind of just been watching her and t- stealing ideas on how to raise kids. Oh. But, um, <laughs> I've got a, a, a beautiful partner here. Um, we're we're actually we're not married, but um, you know, we're we're bringing a child into the world, and she's. Oh. Lauren is a fantastic person and uh, I think she's going to be a great mother. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm basically just hoping to follow her lead a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I've I've got plenty of experience traveling. I, I know my, the ins and outs of how to get around an airport and everything. Quickly. <laughs> that definitely will be helpful when you've got a little tyke, you know. Yes. Your... Well, I must say congratulations to you and your lovely partner, Thank Your you. Your little Thank daughter, you. or you expect, um, expecting a daughter? Yes, Girl? we've got a oh. daughter. And I, I think it's, it's any day now, I think. Wow. Yeah, so any time now. Due date was 23rd of December, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're pretty much at full term, so it could be any time. Any day. Now. Well, so. good Ooh. luck to you both. And I'm it's, sure a, it's, we... it's a miracle we got through this interview without going <laughs> to the hospital. <laughs> Oh dear, well, I won't keep you obviously too long. Just a couple more questions, and then sure. you know, I'll let you get on with your day and you know, not get to, to the not hospital to and have a baby. And... <laughs> exactly, have a baby. <laughs> um, Colin, then just to wrap up a bit, can you tell sure. us where people can follow you or get your music on social media? Yes, so, um. So, uh, social media is Callum underscore Kerr underscore one or Callum Kerr one if you're in the UK. So I have right. to say Kerr over here. Or Kerr. Else, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Another one of those Americanisms. Um, but it's just Callum Kerr one. Um, 
there's a few fake profiles out there which is annoying um i don't know why people do that but you know on instagram it's the one with the blue check and uh yes on tiktok it's the one with the you know the the most followers and those are those are my social media accounts that's where you can kind of follow me for um news in terms of um you know gigs that i'm playing or music that's being released um and then in terms of music all the platforms that uh, you're used to listening to music on, so Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube, all those, um, you know, Pandora, all those uh, streaming services. Me and my friend Chris Andrucci, who's another Scottish country singer, have a song coming out, not on Friday this week, but the following Friday, so the 15th. Excellent. Uh, we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, it's called Tamed by Tennessee, and it's about um, traveling all over the world, but finally meeting a love in Tennessee so oh uh, wonderful I think, I think it's my uh my favorite song that I've put out so far um and the plan for next year is to put out a lot of music so if you follow me on Spotify or Apple Music or Instagram or wherever you can um it will keep you up to date with all the releases and stuff that sounds fantastic fantastic well Callum thank you so much for taking time out of your your day and I wish you pleasure. both thank you good for luck <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much thanks Callum all right. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.